In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to web scrape into your bubble application. And I'm going to be using uh, the web scraper page to API. Um, I was working on a recent client project and uh, I tried a number of different web scraper APIs and I found that page to API uh, offers the best integration for what I was trying to do um, with the bubble um, API connect plugin. So that's what I'll be demonstrating. Uh, to you now. Um, so uh, if we head into um, the Bubble API connector, install this plugin if you haven't already um, by Bubble, and we'll add another API. And so this is page two API. And uh, then we're going to make a call. And uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we will be um, scraping the H1 tag. Um, this is a way of um, identifying an HTML code, um, the most important header on the web page. Um, so it's quite a common target for web scraping. Uh, so we're just going to call it uh, scrape h1. Um, and then we have to dig into the page to API documentation uh, in order to know how to fill out our um, API call here. Um, so uh, here we go. Uh, so I have to make a, um, if you're looking at API documentation, personally, I find the easiest one to translate into bubble is by looking for the C URL um, section. So not Ruby, not Python. This is the easiest one to, to translate into bubble. So I, I need to make a, a post call. And in the header, I have to make this declaration here, um, content type. Um, so in the header, content type application JSON okay and then this little um, hyphen D tells me that the rest of the content here is to go uh, as, as data but you could also think of it as going in the body of the call um, so uh, I have to make that okay and then it's a post and um, the uh, we make the call to this address here Uh, and then there are a few other things uh, we need to add in. Uh, oh, but before we do that, um, this is a common mistake I overlook it all the time when I'm making um, API integrations uh, to swap this to action. Um, data uh, allows you to uh, pull in information if you were uh, a little bit like a, a do a search of. Um, so if you wanted to express a list of time zones in the drop down, uh, you would use the uh, data action here. Uh, sorry, the, the use as data, that's a bit confusing, um, for the list of uh, time zone APIs. But action enables you to make this call in a workflow, which is what we want to do. We want to make the call and then uh, save the result uh, to our database. Um, so the other uh, parts that we need uh, is here. Um, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. into uh, the body of my um, my API call. And uh, and then let's, because uh, this is taken from an example, there's a lot here that we don't need uh, and that we need to edit in order to make it work in bubble. Um, so the URL, uh, we can make it um, a dynamic value by using uh, the uh, triangle ended brackets. Um, so URL, and then we want to untick from private uh, because we want to be able to insert a value in here in our API call in the workflow. Uh, and then the we just want to target the H1. So I'm going to delete uh, these other um, expressions here, these other lines, uh, and making sure that I don't leave a stray comma at the end, otherwise the JSON will be invalid. And uh, I think that, uh, oh, and we need to put a valid URL in here. Um, And then uh, let's give it a test. Okay, so there's something wrong with my JSON. Uh... Ah, I've not got a closing bracket. So you can see um, that you have this parent bracket here and I have one down here, uh, but actually the past content, uh, it has its own. Um, 
So I, to put it really neatly, I'd have a bracket down here. Let's try that. Okay, web scraping takes a few moments, um, but there we go. Um, so you can see here that it has returned uh, as uh, title um, underscore HTML. That's the label that I assigned in the body of the JSON. Um, but it's returned uh, the whole H1 um, portion of HTML. Uh, now, there's a way to get around that. Um, if I go back into the documentation and then have a look for data extraction, uh, you'll see that I can tell page to API what sort of data I want to get back. So I just want to get back text. Uh, so I can go back in here and uh, by adding in uh, that expression there. Um, so that's, there we go, that's the label that it returns. Um, and so uh, in fact, we will rename that to uh, page h1. And then let's initialize the call. Like I was saying, this takes uh, a few seconds to complete. Um, and one reason for that is that um, I have um, the scraper using like a real browser. Um, uh, there we go. So the request was made with uh, a real browser. And the advantage of that is that most websites, uh, it, in my experience using web scrapers, they will block uh, an attempt to scrape their content if it doesn't look like it's by a human or like a legitimate uh, indexing bot, like um, like Google's indexing bot. Um, so I found, I mean, you can turn this off and on most web scraping services by not using a real browser, you'll save some money per request. Um, but I found that it's just, just much more reliable. And so there we go, I get that callback BBC homepage is the H1 um, for that page. So my expression works. Uh, and then let's let me demonstrate how to add this in to uh, your uh, design of your bubble app. Um, so I've got a repeating group here which shows uh, a list of websites uh, and I want to be able to add a URL in here, uh, click scrape and it to be added to my database. So let's do that. Uh, when the button is clicked, uh, plugins, um, because I have it as an action, uh, I see my um, API call here. And then I link this up to my input. Uh, and then I'm going to want to reset my input so I can place more than uh, one call through very quickly. Uh, and lastly, perhaps most importantly, I need to add it to my database. Uh, so I have already created a type of website and I'm going to save my h1 in here. This is the key bit, results of step one, uh, and then looking for my label, which is uh, page underscore h1. And just so I know what website I've called, uh, I want to reference the uh, URL. So that's the input. And then otherwise, Currently, I'll be referencing an empty input as I put it after my reset. I'll just pop it there. Um, then let's give it a refresh. And let's give it a try. So one of the things you'll realize is you have to, um, with web scrapers, uh, that they're, they're not that clever. I mean, rather, you have to do a lot of the supportive work providing them with, an, with a correct URL yourself. Um, so if I was building this into a, an app that other users were were um, going to be using, uh, I would find uh, ways in the expression here to ensure that HTTPS, etc., is included, that uh, it checks that the URL is valid, um, otherwise it isn't going to work. Uh, so let's try. Okay, there we go. Uh, it's come across. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, in fact, let's try and demonstrate it not working. Uh, so let's put in a deliberate error. Okay, Udemy lives on www.udemy. Um, okay, in that instance it worked, uh, probably because Udemy's got a redirect set up um, from uh, the root domain to the www. Um, but uh, let's make an even more deliberate error. Okay, there we go. So the API call is uh, throwing up that there is an issue. 
Um, so you'd want to find a way uh, in your Bubble app of handling errors, uh, perhaps nudging users with uh, the placeholder of how to correctly enter in a URL uh, to make the web scraping process as reliable as possible.